Hi, this is Professor McLaughlin with a brief lecture on jurisdiction. And this will revolve around a case from Chapter 3 in the Melvin book. So I'm calling it a case study. Um, this is the Goodyear Tire versus Brown case. It's a 2011 U.S. Supreme Court decision. And this is to help you, um, this will go into a lot more detail than the book goes into. And really the purpose is to help you understand jurisdiction as applied. Um, and it might uh, bring into more clarity um, the concepts that surround jurisdiction. So Goodyear Tire is a 2011 case, and the issue really was about whether courts, state courts, have jurisdiction over foreign subsidiaries of U.S. corporations. So I just restated the issue here a little bit clearer. We're plaintiffs in a defective tire lawsuit able to sue Goodyear Tire, who's a U.S. corporation, um, but were, are, were plaintiffs able to pull the foreign subsidiaries uh, into a U.S. court? Um, and we'll take a look at uh, the facts, the plaintiffs, the defendants, and uh, the court's two-step approach to analyzing jurisdiction. So Goodyear Tire is a U.S. corporation. It's headquartered in Ohio. It is an Ohio company. It has two subsidiaries. I know my little lines here are faint, but the circle up top is the Goodyear Tire and Rubber case. It's a U.S. corporation. It has a French subsidiary and a Turkish subsidiary, and they make and sell tires in Europe and Asia. There were two, sadly, there were two boys involved in a bus accident outside of Paris. They died from their injuries. The parents believe the accident was due to a defective tire. Um, those tires were manufactured from a foreign subsidiary of Goodyear. Those subsidiaries were located in Luxembourg in Turkey. And the boys came from North Carolina, and the parents wanted to sue the subsidiaries uh, and Goodyear Tire in a state court in North Carolina. So court has a two-step analysis for determining jurisdiction. First, it has to have personal jurisdiction, and jurisdiction is the power of the court to hear a matter. And there are two facets, two elements to that power. The element of personal jurisdiction, power of the court over people, and the power of the court over the subject matter of the dispute, or the dispute itself. So the people in the dispute are going to be um, sometimes a company. In this case, it's Goodyear Tire. The other people in the dispute are the parents of the deceased. And we'll take a look at how the courts determine if they have power over person. And then the subject matter jurisdiction. How does a court decide it has power over a dispute. So subject matter could be, uh, in this case, it's a defective tire. That's a product li liability. It could be a breach of contract, could be a criminal matter, family law matter. That's the subject matter of the dispute. So courts have jurisdiction over people and businesses who live and work near them. Orange County courts have jurisdiction over Disney, Disneyland, Disney properties, Disney hotels, employees of Disney, and also University of California at Irvine, which is the largest employer in Irvine. Um, maybe Orange County, I can't remember. Los Angeles courts will have power over anybody located in Hollywood, and also LAX. That's personal jurisdiction, and also the people who live in the counties of Orange. Orange County courts will have power over people who are domiciled here, who live here. 
whose driver's license indicates that they have an address within Orange County, who are registered to vote here, who work here. Maybe they live someplace else, but they work here. That also could create connections to the County of Orange. So courts have jurisdiction over disputes that happened in their county. So if a dispute happens in Irvine, and Irvine is in the County of Orange, if the breach of contract claim happened in Orange County, uh, the County of Orange uh, courts, the Superior Courts, will have jurisdiction. So you're located here, the dispute happened here, uh, you live and work here, your business is here, you have a subsidiary here. Just kind of giving you the sense of how courts determine this jurisdiction. It is true that companies do business and live, air quotes, in multiple places. If you want to sue Amazon, do I, you know, where does Amazon live? Where is it headquartered? Where does it do business? Everywhere, because it's amazing. But not really. This is a Securities and Exchange Commission filing. It's a 10K. And Amazon is telling us that it is incorporated in Delaware. That's how corporations are born. We'll get into that later in the course. But it's giving its home address, air quotes, its address for its air, uh, headquarters in Seattle, Washington. So multiple places. So how, how, where am I going to sue Amazon? Well, another U.S. Supreme Court case, Hertz v. Friends, developed this concept of a nerve center where corporations are born in one place, maybe Delaware, maybe California, maybe Washington State, but they do business in other places or have our headquarters in another place. And headquarters used to be, or sometimes headquarters still are, just where meetings happen, not where the executives um, function out of. So Hertz said, well, when determining where corporations are citizens of, we want to look for the nerve center. So the nerve center of your body is your spinal cord. It attaches your, to your head and to the rest of the body. And what the Hertz case said is that courts should really look for where is the actual center of direction and control, coordination, where is human resources, where are the executives living, where are policies being made and sent out to the rest of the business. And that's where the nerve center is. And that may be in Seattle. It's probably in Seattle for Amazon. And that's where Amazon is domiciled. And that's where, if you were looking for personal jurisdiction over Amazon, it would be the courts in Seattle, whatever the county courts are. Um, in whatever county Seattle is in, in Washington. So another case we have to talk about is the case called International Shoe. And all I really want you to remember from this case is, well, it's not just about the nerve center. It's not just about where people live. It's also about counting contacts. So courts, when they're determining personal jurisdiction, particularly when businesses are involved, they're looking at things like bank accounts, uh, contractual relationships, a fleet of trucks. Those create contacts with the state. So you may be headquartered in Irvine, but you're a shipping company and you do most of your, you know, your trucks are in Riverside County or you have a fueling station in Riverside County, and you have more contacts with Riverside County than Orange County. And those, these are the kinds of mathematics that go on when courts are looking at what, uh, at a dispute and trying to understand if it, they have connections, contacts, and personal jurisdiction. 
So in businesses, contacts and connections with a place are created through bank accounts, through employees, through buildings. And I'm giving these quoted statements are just case statements that help us try and understand jurisdiction. So I need minimum contacts, and those contacts need to be continuous and systemic. I can't have just visited Riverside County once. That doesn't give my business or uh, my personal self a uh, very much connection to Riverside County. But if I'm there continuously, systematically, if I have employees there, if I have a building there, then that creates personal jurisdiction. Subject matter jurisdiction is something, well, very straightforward. Courts are given subject matter jurisdiction when they're created by the Constitution. The Superior Court, this is from the Superior Court of Orange website, and the court has eight locations and here's all matters in criminal, traffic, civil, probate, juvenile, family law, and mental health cases. And that's the subject matter jurisdiction. And that's a lot. That covers pretty much everything. What's missing from there? Uh, things that are only federal. And that's the Superior Court of California is a state court. It won't handle federal matters. So we are not seeing tax disputes with the IRS, bankruptcy, federal environmental protection agency issues. Those kind of matters, this court does not have subject matter jurisdiction over, so it can't hear those disputes. So Goodyear Tire, it's a sad story. Those poor young men lost their lives. That's very sad, and their parents are worried or convinced that it was a defective tire. And so personal jurisdiction, the North Carolina court, the parents want to sue in North Carolina. The foreign subsidiaries of Goodyear do not want and do not believe that North Carolina courts have power over them. So personal jurisdiction, the court in North Carolina is going to weigh contacts, connections between the two sides. Subject matter jurisdiction, very straightforward. It's a negligence or product liability case, and any court with civil jurisdiction can hear the case. So here is the analysis. It really is weighing the number of connections of each side, connections to North Carolina, and I put connections to Europe, and I could have gotten a little fancier and said connections to France, then a separate scale, side of the scale, connections to Luxembourg, connections to Turkey. And the kinds of things the court is looking for for personal jurisdiction are, you know, where do people live? Where is business being done? Where did the incident happen? Where are the subsidiaries located? And not many of those connections are on the North Carolina side. So the holding of the case was that the Supreme Court said Given the two-step analysis that we need to go through, given the Hertz v. Friends case where we're looking for uh, the nerve center, um, and given the international shoe holding where we're looking for continuous contact, the North Carolina court only had power over Goodyear Tire, not the foreign subsidiaries. Um, Actually, the slide is wrong. I'll change it later. I don't quite know how to edit on Camtasia. This uh, this line here needs to be... Oh, sorry. <laughs> this line, this last bullet point needs to be on the personal jurisdiction side. So I'll save that. But um, for our purposes, I just wanted to walk you through the analysis. Um, and, and then I think you should look for a question on this type of analysis or even on the Goodyear tire case um, on assessment one. Thank you.